for the Taylor series, you're going to want to know these four function polynomials. These are all McLaren, and you can turn them into Taylor if you know the values and the shifts. But for the McLaren series, this is a good memory thing to know. And it's also a really good trivia to know if you're going on a date and they want to know what sine x is in polynomial. Yeah. So uh, now, here's what I want to ask you. Here's what I want to ask you is, what if I wanted to know what the sine of x squared was? Okay. If I wanted to know the sine of x squared and you knew what the sine of x was, how hard do you think this is to find out what the sine of x squared is? Wherever you see an x, put in an x squared. So now it's going to be x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus x squared to the fifth over 5 factorial plus x squared to the, what did I do there? Oh, I see, to the minus to the 7th over 7 factorial. So this turns into x squared minus x to the 6th over 3 factorial, x to the 10th over 5 factorial, minus x to the 14th over 7 factorial. Who cares? Right? <laughs> Who cares? Why would I even, why would this even matter what that is? Well, here's why it matters, is if I asked you to take the integral of sine, what would you say? Cosine, and actually negative cosine x, right? You could take the antiderivative of this, right? And what's the antiderivative of x? x squared over 2. What's the antiderivative of x cubed? x to the fourth over four, right? And you could take this antiderivative <coughs> and you, you could figure out what that is. And it's actually going to turn into this when you put the correct plus c. But here's the problem. I can't take the anti, a little too much chatting, guys. Got to stop. Thank you. Antiderivative of sine x squared, that you can't take. We have no tools of figuring that out until now. Now you just take the antiderivative of x squared minus x to the sixth plus x to the tenth. It's beautiful, simple. Polynomials are easy to take antiderivatives of. And now you can take the antiderivative of this, and you've got yourself an integral. We could do this with any x cubed, x to the seventh. You can put a 2x in there. You could do anything that you want. Any function now can do it. In fact, what we really like to see is something like x cubed times this. That's a mess. That'd be like um, integration by parts three times, blah, blah, blah. Well, but all you do with this is once you have sine of x squared, what do you multiply everything by if it's x cubed sine x squared? Just multiply by x cubed. And then take the antiderivative, and you've got it. So this is a very, this is why we do McLaren and Taylor series. So you can take integrals of things that we ran out of tools to do. Yeah. Of what? Oh, factorial. It, this is a constant. So we pull the constant out. We don't have to worry about it. And a derivative of factorial. The, uh, X factorial we can't take the antiderivative of that I know of. You'd have to use an approximation technique for that. So let's say on an exam, I said, tell me the integral of e to the x cubed. Okay. So how would you find the integral of e to the x cubed? Well, the first thing I'd do is turn this into a McLaren, and I'd take the integral of what? 1 plus... Instead of x, what do I put in its place? Yeah. And it might say go out to degree 6. Now, probably degree 9. They'd say go to degree 9. Well, if I put an x cubed in here, 
you get a new formula, 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6th over 2 factorial plus x to the 9 over 3 factorial dx. And now you can take that antiderivative, which is x plus x to the 4th over 4 plus x to the 7th over 7 times 2 factorial plus x to the 10th uh, over 10 times 3 factorial plus c. There's your antiderivative. Magic. Really, it truly is magic.